The Aldrich Family, written by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! You know, ladies and gentlemen, scarcely a day passes that doesn't bring us a letter from some housewife praising Jell-O butterscotch pudding. Many of these letters read somewhat as follows. I've tried just about every ready-prepared pudding on the market, and Jell-O butterscotch pudding is the one for me. Other letters, of course, speak of how easy Jell-O butterscotch pudding is to make, because you simply add milk, cook for a few minutes, and cool. And still other letters tell us how grateful housewives are for the many ways you can serve Jell-O butterscotch pudding. But the big point is its flavor, the warm, buttery, brown sugar flavor of creamy golden butterscotch, just the way you like it, full of rich homemade goodness. Yes, friends, you like Jell-O butterscotch pudding a lot, so just try it and let your own taste tell you why Jell-O butterscotch pudding is the pudding that thousands call the best of all. <laughs> If your doorbell rings tonight and you answer it and find no one there, you remember that this is Halloween and that you too were a youngster yourself. And you might suspect Henry Aldrich of having something to do with the prank because he's a real boy from your own neighborhood. Tonight we find Henry in the Aldrich living room with his friend Toby. <sighs> Gee whiz, am I bored. Same here, Henry. How could a thing like this happen, Toby? It's Halloween and the two of us are dead broke. Gee, I thought I'd never live to see a thing like this happen. Wouldn't you think, Toby, that there'd be at least one thing a person could do on Halloween without its costing money? That's what you'd think. How about going over and getting even with Mr. Tarbell for what he did a year ago? How? Well, we could think of something. I'll tell you what. If we could get his front steps loose from the porch, we could hide them. No, Toby. But, Henry, then when he comes out and starts to go down the steps, he'll wonder where they are. Who will wonder where what is? Oh, is that you, Father? You are not going to touch anyone's front steps. How do you know about that? I'm psychic. Halloween or no Halloween, you boys are not to touch any private property. Henry, are you in the living room? Yes, Mother. Gee whiz, Father, Toby and I don't want to just sit around and look at each other all evening. How would you like to have me make some candy? Mother, candy... Everybody else is out doing things, and we sit home and make candy. Well, if you'd planned ahead, you'd have enough money to go to a dance. I did plan ahead. I told you several weeks ago that my allowance is inadequate. Yes. Henry, what do you say we get our hats and go out for a little stroll? All right. You aren't going to play any practical jokes on anyone, are you? Oh, oh no, Mr. Aldrich. We're just going out for the fresh air. And maybe ring one or two doorbells. Henry, you're not going to ring any doorbells. But, Mother, what harm can come from innocently ringing just one doorbell? That's rung 50 million times in the year anyway. Because most people don't like it. Henry, the minute you begin to trespass, you're liable to run into trouble. <laughs> Father, name one thing that could happen from sticking a pin into a doorbell. Aside from the fact that it's going to ring for a while. I'm not going to argue. Toby, I don't think I'll go out. No? Oh, year. Ever since way back, I've been looking forward to tonight. And now it's here, and I can't even stick a pin in a doorbell. Sam, if Henry didn't actually stick a pin in it, couldn't he ring just one bell? It's entirely up to you, Alice. All we do is ring it and run, Father. Don't look at me, son. I'm only your father. Well, I don't see what fun there could be in it. At least my whole year wouldn't be ruined. Well, could you ring a bell where no one is home? Mother. <laughs> All right, if it'll make you any happier, go out and ring one bell. We can, Father? We can? Toby, come on. Okay. I don't see what fun you'll get from it. At least we can say we've done it. Henry, I've got an idea. What? My folks didn't say I couldn't ring more than one. I'll tell you. I'll do the ringing and you do the running. Okay, let's ring Mr. Edwards' bell first. <laughs> Are you out there on the porch without any hat on? I am. 
I was just out to look at the car. Someone is taking the battery out of it. Who do you suppose could have done a thing like that? Oh, some Halloween hoodlum. I tell you, Phoebe, this town has reached a nice state of affairs. Well, come in and close the door before you catch pneumonia. Do you know what I think I'll do? I'll just wait inside the door and see whether anyone comes back. I'll get my cane, too. The next boy that comes up on this porch is going to get the tanning of his life. Yes, dear. Toby. Toby. What? He's going in. Come on up on the porch. What were they talking about, Henry? Search me. Let's write a note and pin it to the door. Okay, got a pencil? No, here's my fountain pen. Listen, Toby, let's just ring the bell and run. Let me ring it. No, Toby, this is the only one I can ring. You can ring the next one. No, besides, Mr. Edwards was my idea. Here we go, Toby. I'm going to ring it. Do you hear anyone coming? No, I better ring it again. Well, Phoebe! Somebody's Let coming. Him. Run, Toby, run. I am. Stop there! Stop! Oh, God! Quick, Toby, duck around the side of the house here. I'm with you, Harry. Stop! Do you hear me? Stop nothing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What was that? I'm all right. I just knocked over an ash can. Come on. Duck back here through this great harbor. Oh. There goes Mr. Edwards over it. Toby. That'll help. If I catch you, I'll turn you both. Come on out through these trees, Toby. If he catches you, Henry, don't give your right name. Whose name should I give? Take one up. What was that? That, that was Mrs. Edwards. <laughs> Look, Toby, here's a hole or something we can hide in. Yeah, where? Right here in the ground. Oh, gee whiz, wait, Toby. What's the matter? It's an old oil. It's an old well. Well, this is a nice time to tell me. What's the matter? I dropped my fountain pen in it. Shh. Shh, Toby, he's coming. Toward us? Shh. He went right on. Boy, that was close. Let's beat it, Toby, and get out of here. But, Henry, I dropped my fountain pen. Is that so important? My mother just bought it for me. Gee whiz, I can't go home without my fountain pen, Henry. How are we going to get it? It's way down at the bottom of the well. Well, there's an old chain here. It's hanging right straight down. Is it fastened here at the top? Sure, right to this piece of iron. Wait a second, I'll roll up my trousers. You better take them off, Toby, then you won't get them wet. <laughs> sure, and hold my coat, too. John! Yes, what is it? Did you find them? No, not yet. Shh, Toby. Did you look in the shed out beyond the well? I'm just coming from there. Well, come back in the house, then. All I can say is they must have disappeared right into the ground. It's okay, Toby. You can go down now. Look out while I go over the edge. Are you sure you can get up again? Why not? All I have to do is hang on to this chain and climb right up the side. So long, Henry. Hang on. Hang on tight, old boy. She wins. What's the matter? Toby, what's the matter? There's something tied part way down on the chain. What is it? It's an automobile battery. A battery? What's it doing down there? How should I know? And the chain ends right here. It does? Can you jump the rest of the way? What do you mean, jump? It's so dark down here, I wouldn't know when I got to the bottom. Oh, here's the trouble. It's up here. Some of the slack is hooked onto a bolt. I'll see whether I can loosen it. Let it out easy, Henry. Don't worry, Toby. You don't think I'd let you fall, do you? Toby. Oh, Toby. Toby, where are you? I thought you were my friend. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Toby, can you float? How can you float in four inches of water? <laughs> Oh, gee, get your pen and come on up. You're crazy. There's nothing to take a hold of. Stand on the battery and reach. I can. Well, gee, Toby, I'll have to get you out somehow. I wonder whether I can find a ladder any place. Ask Mr. Edwards whether he has one. Sure. Do you think I'm crazy, Toby? Well, hurry up and get a ladder someplace. Look, there's a, the lid to the well up here. Well, what about it? Do you want me to put it over the top so you won't get cold? No, just get me a ladder. Well, do you want your pants and coat? Just throw down my coat. Okay, here it comes. I'll get the ladder that's in our garage, Toby. And if anybody speaks to you, don't answer. <laughs> Has Henry come in yet? Not yet. It seems as though it's taking him an awfully long time to ring one doorbell. Do you realize, Alice, this is the first Halloween no one has bothered us? I certainly do. Did you put all the ash cans in? I put them in the basement. What was that? Something out and back. 
Sam. Sam, it sounds like one of the garage doors. You suppose anyone's getting in there? Listen, dear. Come with me. Where? Let's go out to the kitchen and look through the window. Is the kitchen light on? No. No one can see us. Sam, someone is in the garage. Stand back from the window. Can you see them? Alice. Someone is coming out of the garage with our big ladder. Sam Holdridge, I think that's the limit. I'm going down the cellar stairs here and slip out to the basement door. Well, why not go out the back door? This way I can head him off in the driveway. Shall I turn the light on? No, no, don't turn the light on. I can see quite all right. <laughs> Sam, what have you done? I forgot I put the ash cans down here. Well, my goodness, dear, are the ashes all over my cellar floor? Yes, and so am I. <laughs> turn on the light. Sam, you better come back up here and get your hat and coat. You want whoever it is to get away? Is that ladder more important than your health? Now, come back up here. But, Alice, he's already gone out toward the street. In a town this size, Sam, you can certainly track down someone with a ladder. <laughs> You say the battery was taken right out of your car, Mr. Edwards? Yes, officer. But you didn't see anyone? Not until a few minutes later. Two boys come up on the porch and rang the bell, and I chased them right around here through the grape arbor. And were they carrying the battery? Well, I couldn't say. Well, whoever stole it is going to be apprehended and punished. The young fellows here have got to respect private property. Oh, they don't stop at anything. I even found a pair of somebody's trousers back here. You better take them down to headquarters. Why? Hey, one minute. What's up? Stand back there under this tree. Do you see out there toward the street? Somebody coming? Somebody with a ladder. He's coming right this way. All right, no. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. And when he passes, I nab him. Just a minute there, young man. Oh, gee whiz. Who said that? One minute, I said. Yes, sir. So was there something you wanted? Where did you get that ladder? At home. I asked you, where did you get it? I brought it from home. Sure, I did. I give you my word, I did. I did. Oh, so we're going to have trouble with you. Where's the battery? The battery? What battery? The battery that disappeared from my car. I haven't even seen any battery. What's your name? Why, uh... What is it? It's, a uh, Harry. Harry what? Harry Ambrose. Where are you taking that ladder? Well, not any place in particular. I just... Just happened to be carrying it with me. Just giving it an airing, eh? Taking it out for a walk. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Edwards, what do you think we ought to do with him? It's, uh, 90 days for larceny, isn't it, officer? 90 days in jail for taking my own father's ladder? That's what it is. But, but I've got a friend, see, and I... I see, and he has the batter. No, sir, he's in a terrible predicament. Where is he? Where is he? I don't know. I'm looking for him. Oh, you're just going around with a ladder looking for a friend. Oh, I know that seems hard to believe, officer, but that's what I'm doing. Well, suppose you leave that ladder here. But I'll get the deuce if I don't take it back home. And you'll get 90 days, Harry Ambrose, if you don't put it down. Yes, sir. Now get home with you. Should have been in bed an hour ago. Yes, sir, only I don't know what my friend will do without me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this being Halloween, I'd like to tell you a ghost story. The story of Edgar the Gloomy Ghost. Edgar, it seems, was very fond of nice desserts at dinner. But his wife, Phyllis the Phantom, kept serving him just ordinary desserts. As a result, Edgar went around moaning and groaning like this. Ooh, ooh. Then one day, Edgar's wife bought some jello vanilla pudding at the ghostery store. <laughs> and now Edgar is just as cheerful as can be. No longer does he go around moaning. Now he has a warm, likable laugh like this. <laughs> so, you see, just in case Edgar might drop in, ladies and gentlemen, always keep Jell-O vanilla pudding on hand. It's brimful of tempting flavor, as smooth as rich cream, and extra good when garnished with nuts, marshmallows, or fruits. My own favorite is Jell-O vanilla pudding with sliced bananas. But served any way at all, it's grand. Order this delightful, ready-prepared dessert and start right away to enjoy the luscious flavor of Jell-O vanilla pudding. <laughs> Now, 
Now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. It being Halloween, Henry and his friend Toby set out to ring just one doorbell and come home. However, one thing leads to another until Toby was left stranded at the bottom of a well. And Henry is attempting to rescue it. Good evening. Oh, is that you out there, Henry Aldrich? Good evening, Mrs. Lockwood. Could I borrow a real strong rope from you? A real strong what, dear? A rope. I need about 15 feet of very strong rope. Oh, uh, would a piece of clothesline help any? No, ma'am. I have a friend that's in a well. Oh, well, that's quite a Halloween joke, isn't it? No, ma'am. I'm trying to get my friend out. Uh, well, how did he get in it? He was looking for his fountain pen. Well, why don't you try one of the other houses in the neighborhood? I have, I have, but every doorbell I've rung so far, the people chased me. You don't say so. Yes, ma'am, that's how I got all wet like this. Goodness gracious, how did you get that wet? They poured a bucket of water on me from the second floor window. Well, come to think of it, Henry, we have a good long tow rope out in the car. You have? Yes, sir. You'll find the car right out there in front. Right down the curb a ways? That's right. Okay. If I remember, the rope's a little bit straight in the middle. That's all right. It can certainly hold Toby. Will I find it in the front or the rear of the car? You'll have to look, dear. Guess this is the car. My gosh. That's funny. All right, young fellow. What are you trying to get away with? What's that? Uh, did you think I didn't see you? She was let go of my collar. What were you doing in my car? I've got a friend that's in a well. Yeah? But you see, Mrs. Lockbridge gave me permission to open this car. Mrs. Lockbridge did. It's her husband. Well, it just happens to be my car, and I live right here in this house. You do? You mean this other car here is Lockbridge's? And I suppose you're going to tell me Mrs. Lockbridge gave you permission to let all the air out of my tires? Are they flat? What do you think I was watching out the window for? Well, you certainly have my sympathy. Here you are. What's that? It's a pump. Get to work. But she was, I give you my word, all I was looking for was a piece of rope so I could pull my friend out. Maybe you'd like to have me turn you over to the police, my boy. Oh, no. I... Are you going to hook that pump onto the valve? Yes, sir. What's your name? Why, it's, um, uh, it's, uh, which tire do you want me to pump up first? I ask you your name. It's a Harry Ambrose. Harry Ambrose, eh? Yes, sir. Well, your family ought to be ashamed of you. Yes, sir, they certainly ought to be. I'm going in and keep an eye on you from the house. And don't forget, there's a street lamp right here, and I can see every move you make. Yes, sir. If I hadn't been a boy once myself, I'd turn you over to the law. Yes, sir. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll be darned. Henry? Henry, is that you pumping up those tires? Father, where did you come from? I'm looking for our ladder. And may I first ask what you're doing? Father, I wish you'd go in and tell the man that owns this car that he has no right making me do this. How did he happen to ask you to? I was opening his car, see? Son, didn't you promise to ring just one doorbell? That's all I did then do. Then let's not have any excuses. Pump those tires up and take your punishment. Where are you going? To find a family by the name of Ambrose. Of Ambrose? Ambrose? I tracked a boy by that name as far as Mr. Edwards' house. You don't happen to know him, do you? Harry Ambrose. Do you know him? Well, I think I've heard of him. But he's no friend of mine, Father. Well, hurry up and finish those tires, and then get off. But listen, Father. Hey there, let me hide behind your car. Who's that? Is that you, Henry? Is that you, Homer? Here, Henry, hold it. What is it? It's a red lantern. What am I to do with it? Just hold it, Henry. I'm in a hurry. But I don't want this, Homer. Oh, so there you are. Who? You with the lantern. Come along with me, my boy. <laughs> You wait until I get even with you, Homer. You got away from him, didn't you, Henry? I got away from him, but look at what he did to my coat. How am I going to get this sleeve back on? Aren't I going to help you get Toby out of the well? Yes. And didn't I get this rope for you? Where did you get it? Isn't it a beauty, Henry? I found it over here on Walnut Street. What I mean, Homer, is whose was it? Nobody's. It was just roping off a new sidewalk that had been laid this afternoon. Listen, Homer, I'm not going to use it. Well, we aren't going to keep it, Henry. It's just to get Toby out. But, Homer, I don't think we should use it. All right, then. All right. Not so loud, Homer. Do you see somebody? We're right here by Mr. Edwards' house. Oh. Come on now, Homer, and follow me back to the well. Why don't you want to disturb Mr. Edwards, Henry? Well, if he's going to sleep, there's no sense in waking him up, is there? Come on back through this grape arbor. I'm coming. Where is the well? It's right ahead here. Someplace. Can't you find it? Isn't that strange? She 
wisdom don't fall in the window. Oh, here it is. Hey, Toby. Toby, are you all right? Toby. Who is that? Uh, it's Henry and Homer. Well, you're the only ones that haven't been here before. Who else has been here? Everybody. And they all threw something down. <laughs> the last time it was a bushel of apples. Are you all right, Toby? How could I be? Get me out of here. We're letting a rope down now, Toby. Now here, Henry, I'll help you. Is it down yet, Toby? No. It's coming. Homer, have you got the end? What end, Henry? Of the rope. The end's down here. <laughs> Which end? Both ends. <laughs> well, gee whiz, Homer, if you are in a help. Toby, throw one end up here. How am I going to do that? Just throw it right straight up. Here it comes. Ugh. Where is it? Around my neck. <laughs> Henry, I've got an idea. Look out. What are you going to do? How about dropping this rock down and letting him tie the rope to it? And then throw it up? Now listen. Don't throw anything more down here. There isn't any more room. Henry, do you think you could hold my hand while I go down part way? How would you get the rope? Well, Toby could tie it to my foot. Sure, and then I'll pull you back up. Well, take it easy now. We'd like it over the edge. Okay, have you got a good hold? Yeah. What's that coming down? <laughs> Don't worry, it's Homer. Don't jump, Homer. What do you think I am? Are you sure you got a hold of me, Henry? Sure. Easy now, easy. I only had something to hang on to. This is a nice time to think of that. Don't worry, Homer, I've got you. Boy, my arm's coming right out. How much lower is it? Wait a second and I'll tie the rope on Homer's foot. You got it? Come on, officer, I think they're off this way. I ain't coming. Oh, gee whiz. What's that? Keep quiet. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Gee, if they had come two feet closer, they would have fallen right in with us. That would have been good. Well, we got you out, Toby, even if we did have a hard time finding my father's ladder. And, Toby, we got you away from Mr. Edwards' house. But I still haven't got any pants, Henry. Well, just walk along as though you were coming home from a party. Boy, is this heavy. Is what heavy? Listen, Toby, what are you carrying? This battery. Well, gee whiz, Toby, what'd you bring that for? I didn't even know I had it. Well, we've got to take that right back to Mr. Edwards. All the way? Sure. What do you think we hold it out for? If we get caught with it, we'll get six months in jail. Here, Homer, how would you like to carry it? I don't want it. Let Henry carry it. Toby, don't try to shirk responsibility. Well, you fellas have got to go back with me. I'm not going alone. Come on, then. He was, who's that coming? Where? Down there on the corner. He's coming right towards us. Isn't that a policeman? I think it is, Henry. Let's turn around and go the other way. And that's what I say. No, we'll walk right along as though we were heading for a garage. Sure. Oh, sure. Now our battery ran down and we're going to get it recharged. But I still haven't got any pants. <laughs> Listen, fellas, look ahead there. Where? There's another policeman. And he's walking right toward us. So long, Toby. Now, wait, Henry. You can't leave me flat like this. I've got to get rid of this battery. Well, put it down someplace. Sure, and supposing he sees me. I've got an idea. You see that car parked there by the curb? Yeah. Well, put it inside. Just dump it through the window. Henry, you've got a head on you. Come on now. We'll hide behind, between these two houses. Boy, if they see us. Okay. Wait for me. Well, hurry up. Be quiet. The police are going by. Do you think they saw us? No. They're not even looking this way. Say, fellas, do you know what I just happened to think? What? I left my fountain pen down in the well. Say, gee whiz. What's the matter? That car we put the battery in. What about it? Somebody just drove off in it. Is that you, Henry? Yes, Mother. Will you please tell me where you've been all evening? Just out with Toby. Falling around. Well, come into the living room. I've got to make a phone call first, Mother. Hello, operator. Then I'll be right there. Operator, could you get me? It's right here in the book. It's, um, it's Elm 3-6. Henry! Mother, father isn't in yet, is he? No, he isn't. Oh, hello? Hello, is this Mr. Edwards? Well, Mr. Edwards, this is to inform you that if you will notify the police to look for a car number T-765, I think, or maybe it was... T5 something. Anyhow, in it you'll find your battery. What's that? This is just a friend, Mr. Edwards, who happened to be passing by your house a little while ago. Henry! Goodbye. Henry! 
I'm coming, Mother. Why, where's your coat, dear? I just hung it up in the closet. Well, did you ring your doorbell? Yes, Mother, I rang it. Did you find it worthwhile? Well, to be honest, I think I'm getting a little too old to be doing things like that. <clears throat> Where's my Latin? Oh, Alice, is Henry in? Yes, Sam, he's sitting here studying. Where have you been? I found the ladder, but not the boy. Sam, what on earth do you have all over your shoes? That is cement. They laid a new sidewalk over town and didn't even bother to rope it off. Well, don't get it all over the carpet. And what do you think I found a few minutes ago? What? A battery in the back seat of my car. A, a battery, Father? Tomorrow morning, Henry, you call up the police and find out who lost it. Hi, Father. And then after you've done that, you can go over to Mr. Edwards and get our ladder. Yes, Father. I wonder why people think Halloween is a time for fun. Henry Aldrich will be back in just a moment. And when you make out the grocery list for tomorrow, friends, be sure to include several packages of Jell-O puddings. They're easy to make, inexpensive, and really delicious. Ask your grocer for all three flavors, Jell-O chocolate pudding, Jell-O vanilla pudding, and Jell-O butterscotch pudding. Jell-O puddings are made by the makers of Jell-O, so you know they're good. Good night, folks. Be seeing you next week, I hope. Now listen in again next Thursday evening to the Aldrich family and to the Maxwell House Coffee Time program, which immediately precedes it on most of these stations. A solid hour of sparkling radio entertainment every Thursday night. The Aldrich family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Original music is composed and conducted by Jack Miller. Now this is Harry Von Zell bidding you all good night. It's your grocer, folks, calling up to let you know about our special this week on Bird's Eye Quick Frozen Haddock Fillets. Say what really good haddock it is, too. Chock full of that fresh-tasting, deep-sea flavor. And don't bother to look for any bones, because Bird's Eye Haddock is all cleaned and bone for you, ready for the pan. Buy Bird's Eye Haddock Fillets tomorrow. They're specially low-priced, all this week. <laughs>